All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn, and with me is my co-host, Matt Dixon. Tonight, we have a fantastic guest. We have Coach Tom McPherson. He is the defensive coordinator at Bishop Kinney High School. He also runs Play Fast Football, which many of you know, which has a lot more followers than us. And he was a head coach for 22 years. He's won over 100 games. Guys, fantastic coach. We're so excited to have him on. Coach, welcome to the show. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Uh, <laughs> it's almost uh, – now, if I could get that pop on top of entrance music, it would almost be – you know, with this being WrestleMania week, it would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, but uh, appreciate being here. Um, you know, any anybody that's out there doing what you guys are doing and, and doing what I've tried to do the last 10 years for high school football, um, it's always an honor. Yeah, Coach, I think we kind of share the same vision there. Uh, you know, we're all out there to help high school football coaches from across the country. You know, our goal is to get way better coaches than me and Matt on to talk about football. Your goal is you're a damn good coach, so you talk about football. So we're we're very similar, but slightly different in that aspect. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it's more similar than you think. Um, you know, and it's uh, you know, I I think we all have something to give, and and you know, there's a, a ton of people out there that that want to learn and um you know, want to take information for, for, for their own, you know, um, purposes. And if we can provide positive information that can help somebody, so be it. If not, then it's your choice to use whatever you can take and not use, you know, we're, we're in a coaching business. <laughs> we borrow steel, whatever it is. So if you can use it great, if you can't, then it, it's nobody's hurt. And you better be able to steal. So tonight we're going to talk about a little three high run fits and coverages. Coach, I'm super excited about this. I've always been kind of obsessed with the three high, but I've never been able to put it together mentally on run fits. So I can't wait to take notes myself and go back and do this. But coach, I'm going to go ahead and let you start us off. Three high run fits and coverages. Let's roll. Yeah. So, um, you know, the the easiest way to kind of look at it is um, everything we do in the three high world stems from the same things we did in the four, two, five world. We're split field, we're quarters toolbox. That's who we are. None of those things have changed. Um, and you know, the, the, the three high middle safety guy, um, you know, the Iowa state guy, um, you know, he essentially is a hybrid linebacker. He's the guy that's playing three vertical in your quarters defense. So if you start with any of your two high quarters base principles, that's the guy that's playing three vertical. Um, you know, if you look at standard two by two or two by one sets before you get into three by one adjustments. Um, and when you pair it with tight front stuff that that we use um, predominantly, uh, we're probably going to get into some Oki stuff now because I picked up some information from a visit this last week at Coastal Carolina, um, which is kind of the way Iowa State has gone Um you know, if you start back when when I got into it in in probably 2018 ish, somewhere around there, when Iowa State made it, the, you know, the 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 newest hottest thing, it was the tight front and it was light box theories, right? That's what everybody was. Yep. Um, that's what everybody fell in love with, right? Let's present a box that everybody wants to run the ball into, but then when you run the ball into that box, there's helmets everywhere. Um, and it, it's really, you know, to be honest with you, it's not much different than quarters based stuff like your four two five stuff look like a four one box, but the overhangs were both getting ready to fit runs. It was a seven man box before you could even blink. And, you know, the, there was a fast fitter and a slow fitter based on what gaps are open. And, um, you know, it, it, it fits similar, um, to some of the four, two, five stuff and it fits similar to three, four stuff. So when you look at the, you know, when you look at the, the, the nuts and, and bolts of the, of, of the tight front three high stuff, to the passing strength, strong side, whatever you want to consider it, it basically looks like a tight 3-4 defense. And, you know, the added bonus is the middle safety becomes an extra alley runner to the strong side. Yeah. And now to the weak side, you still are playing some sort of safety corner force. You just don't have another safety behind it that you would in the 3-4. The middle safety is the guy that's kind of, you know, becomes, depending on how you're fitting the backers, but a cutback guy. So it's like to the, to the strong side of the formation where you have, you know, your nickel, Sam, 
you get an extra alley runner that it, it looks just like a three, four defense it is, yeah. is the best way I could describe it. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And that's how I've always wanted to, you know, I know briefly my knowledge is that that third safety, you know, is your fast flow fitter. And my biggest questions are always, what do you do off like split flow? Like, uh, you know, like, split zone and stuff like that where's that third guy fitting so off? so in in kind in kind of toying with it and then playing it for two or three years um you know week to week you've got a kind of game plan like everybody else does um you know i think the biggest thing that we found out the hard way is um the middle safety with the mic and the will need to be kind of tied together if the mic and the will are are fitting things a certain way and they're fitting things extremely fast, and the middle safety probably needs to be slower and almost behind it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, when you look at split flow stuff, are you going to fit off a sniffer? How are you fitting those things with your traditional, you know, um, you know, linebacker fits? All this split flow stuff or split zone stuff um, with teams that became, and we were one of them on offense 100%, teams that became so sniffer-based, yeah. Um, you know, power, GY counter, split flow. The sniffer took you to the ball 90% of the time, and maybe they had a tendency breaker off outside zone or dart or something like that. But, um, you know, teams became so tendency based off the sniffer that you started to me fall back, rock back off the sniffer, however you want to, you know, whatever terminology you want to use in the football world. Um, yeah. You know, regardless of what the offensive line was doing, if the sniffer took you another way, you were fitting backers off of what the sniffer was doing. Um, and for me, the way the middle safety fits, he relates to number three. If three happens to be the sniffer, then that's going to be what he's fitting off of. Um, <laughs> you know, the the game plan-ish part, the funky part is, you know, if the Mike and the Will are fitting that hard off the sniffer, does the middle safety have to stay behind them? Okay, you can, you know, you can kind of toy with that, you know, as much as you need to. If all three of them are fitting off of, that key can they all play that fast okay well you can toy that with you know with tight front stuff and like any other run fit you live and you learn and you say oh shit i can't do that (laughs) you know the mike and the will are running like heck and the middle safety is running like heck and now we've got a little bit of an issue um so you know it's a little bit of it was trial and error at, at 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 some point but you know the bottom line is you're playing tight front light you know light box theories Get the ball C gap or wider and let's go. That's that's what we're trying to do. No vertical entry. Take away the B gap from spread offenses. That's where they want to live. Take those B gaps away. Um, and you know, the the toughest part as a defensive coordinator is the ball is going to be out there. You, you know, even front teams want to spill. Yep. Most of the, you know most good teams that I know of, right? Well, when you spill, that means the ball is now traveling wider. Can you get to where it's traveling? You're trying to send it to a free hitter, but with the ball out there, are you comfortable with your guys playing with the ball out? <laughs> yeah, coach. The years I was very good at calling the defense, my free hitter was a very good open field tackler. The years yes. I wasn't good at calling the defense, that guy couldn't tackle. <laughs> you know, but but when you say that, obviously that's all of us in general. But the bottom yeah. line is, okay, do you want him to struggle with open field tackles with the ball running sideways, or do you want to turn to your head coach with the ball going <laughs> north and south and go, look, I I don't know yep. what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'd I'd rather it live and die on the edge than up the A gap, hundred uh, yeah, percent. And the games, the games you can tackle somebody just like college in the NFL. The games you can tackle somebody, you're going to play good defense. And the, and the games you can't, I would like to tell somebody, you know, or at, let me ask somebody those games that I can't tackle them. What am I supposed to be playing? Yeah. Right. It's the uh, if you've seen the Belichick Saban documentary. And they are all, he talks about them getting on the plane and they're all like, well, we should have done this and that. And he goes, guys, we lost because we couldn't tackle and we couldn't block. That's it. All right. Yeah, get off I mean, your laptops and figure out how we do that better. And, and especially, uh, like, especially at their level, yeah, you have professional players, you have free agents, you have trades, you know, college, you can recruit. In the high school world, we don't always lose, you know, because we can't block and tackle. We can't block and tackle because the other team is that much better than us. Yeah. Um, you know, so. It, it it still comes down to that you can't get guys on the ground, you can't block people at their world in you know their level, their world. They need to address that in our world. We need to address it, but there's going to be weeks where even addressing it, we still have issues. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
You know, the other day, um, going back to what you're saying about the tight front and the linebackers fit and everything, I watched your, you made a short on it. It was really, really good about the scrape versus the plug. Yeah. Are you guys using both those methods? Do you use a particular so method we, over the other? We, we had not, um, that that's so interesting enough. I go to visit coastal Carolina and the, you know, I don't really know what they do on defense. Um, it was put together, um, you know, our head coach, Coach Krause, put it together. And, you know, it's convenient. It's only five or six hours away. It's it's a great place for, you know, a staff retreat. Um, and I just said, look, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't know who around here plays distinct three high defense. Yeah. We can, we can go anywhere defensively and get better. Um, so if it's something that fits you, you know, I think he was kind of into their option stuff and how they were running some of their option stuff. And, um, you know, if it fits you offensively, then by all means, if it's convenient and it fits you, then let's go. Um, you know, other than visiting Iowa State or, you know, maybe Kansas State or some of the teams that are playing true three high defense, like on to me on defense, you can get better yeah. anywhere you go. Um, I think it's a little bit less schematic based than offense is. Um, you know, two high, one high becomes a different world. I get that. Um, even odd can become a different world. I get that. Um, but I think there's enough, uh, at least in my opinion, I think there's enough carryover to what people do on defense to say, all right, look, that's the goal. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. Um, but then when I get there, um, I don't really know what they're playing. Uh, they are disciples of the Aranda stuff, which I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm kind of familiar with, you know, uh, you know, the Aranda Todd Orlando stuff is kind of where they come from but I don't know any of their terminology. I don't know their calls. I'm sitting in on meetings and, you know, you can piece things together, but it's like, I have no idea what they're running. Um, and the linebacker coach was actually at New Mexico with Bob Davey after Iowa state made the change. And then New Mexico made the change and they were playing three high stuff. And it just so happens that I spent the majority of my visit watching New Mexico clips at coastal Carolina. That's awesome though. That's such a, a, the fact that they're willing to do that. B, that you could still go someplace where they run. I mean, you know, they run tight front, Aranda's tight front stuff, but not three yeah. high. But you run into another coach that has those clips, is willing to pull them up and, and work with you on them. That's that's football, and that's what makes our entire community awesome. Yeah, such a like, cool thing. You know, I tell people all the time if you you know if you go to a college and and you're there to any college visit, any clinic you go to, if you're there to verbatim take their playbook back, you probably are in the wrong spot. Um, you know, you've got to learn some things. You got to, you know, if there's a different way of teaching something, great. If there's a buzzword, great. If there's a philosophy, you're never going to get dumber. You yeah. know, you're not going to get worse. Um, you know, if you go there thinking that you're going to bring back how they play defense and why they're top 10 or top 15, you know, you're probably in the wrong business. So, um, but, but the, the, the thing about it is when you do get there, these guys have been so many places and they've done yeah. so many things that, and, and now the way film is and libraries are like, you know, it just so happened that they asked what we did and I told them what we did. And he said, Oh, you know, we were doing that at New Mexico. And I said, well, let's take let's a look that. at it. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, the great thing was they played it um, and they had they had rules kind of, you know, I think I touched on it on that video a little bit. They had they had rules that were kind of one in the core, two in the core. Um, so if there was a tight end and a running back, which they considered two guys in the core, they played Oki five zero five. Yeah. If there was one in the core and it was offset, you know, uh, they played five zero four I, which is kind of the world that Iowa State yeah. and most three high teams have gotten into the last three, you know, three or four years. Um, now, it, is that four-eye to the back or away from the back? To the back if it's offset. If it's pistol, now you got to figure out what the hell you're, you know, you want to do. But um, generically speaking, shade front or back front, however you want to terminology it in the three-high world, the four-eye is going to go to the back, right? It's like putting a three <laughs> technique there, cut back on zone, all that stuff. So, um, but I, I think they all got into a world where the tight front was interesting. Yeah, but the ball fell off the pool table real quick, and at that level, I think they all started freaking out a little bit and started figuring yeah. out, hey, these four eyes are cool. Tight front is causing a lot of issues for people, but once they know we're tight, we've got some concerns. 
Um, and just through my research the last couple of years, you, you just don't see – you'll see Mint, obviously, with a fourth rusher, you know, the Georgia Kirby Smart stuff and um, Aranda stuff, Wisconsin stuff, however you want to look at it. Um, you'll see that, but just tight three high every down, you just don't see it anymore. No. Yeah, and so there's, a, I think, a great question that you're talking about right there. Is there anything that really gives you trouble as you're doing that? Is it the outside run and that ball falling off the pool table, like you're saying? Is it people running a stretch or buck sweep or anything? Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, pin pull angles, you know, things like that that teams are going to try um, right away. Um, you know, but the, the, the interesting argument for me all the time is if the things that give us trouble get out of tight front, then why wouldn't the offense just do the things that give us trouble and we'll never play tight. <laughs> so, you know, as a defensive guy, one of the things you got to think about all the time is, you know, we, we live in a world where we don't want it to be this way, but the offense has a tendency to dictate. And, yeah. uh, you know, when you go back to the evolution of what Kirby smart does at Georgia, and they go back and talk about the Alabama, Ohio state game and, that year that Ohio State ripped them and they went down and visited Tom Herman at Houston when he got that job and Todd Orlando. And, you know, the bottom line was teams figured out that with certain personnel groups, they could get Alabama in what they wanted. Yeah. And, you know, in essence on defense, is that really what we're trying to do? So if I want to be tight front because I think tight front causes some issues, if you put a tight end in and get me out of tight front, then why would you not just play with a tight end the entire game? You know, obviously in high school, maybe you don't have a tight end. Maybe that's not what you do. I, I get all that. But, like, if my biggest thing when we started with the tight front was I, I don't want to get out just because somebody does something formational. Yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah, three-man services are a bitch when you're playing generic tight front. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, 12 personnel and some other things are a bitch. But. You still have to live in a world where you got to be willing to play tight front to some of those things, because if you lose the ability to play tight, then you're going to lose the ability or the illusion of the other team having to block tight. If they know they can get you out of it, you have just waste it. Like to me, half the deal of playing tight is the other team's got to spend half their practice time blocking it because it's not okay and it's not even. Yeah, you know, absolutely. So, um. So I always look at it for us at, at the places I've been. There's got to be some, you know, um, there's got to be some deception there. There's got to be something that cuts into their practice plan. There's got to be something that gets them to do something different because, you know, to be honest, a lot of the jobs I've had in my career, 60 to 75% of the time on Friday night when we get off the bus, hand in the dirt isn't getting it done. So, yeah. you know, there has to be deception. There has to be make you work harder, make you change what you do. And that's kind of what the tight front did. You know, the tight front, you got to change some of your rules. You got to figure out what are you going to do on gaps? Can you hinge the four eye? Do you got to go all the way back? You know, where, where do you want to push your inside zone to? Um, so the, the original mindset was, look, you can come out in three man services. You can come out in 21. I'm not checking our tight stuff because if I do, then I think you're already dictating to me, um, you know, how the game's going to be played and we'll never be in tight. So we lived that way the first year and it was really, really good to us. And then the second year coming back off of it and everybody knew we were tight, we got more adjustments. We got more three-man surfaces, more 12. And I think there is certainly a world where you need to be okey or you need to be back front, five zero four i Yeah. But you can't fit it the same. So – um the plug fit scrape fit deal basically came from watching the New Mexico film and watching them fit their three high light box from, yeah. you know, that theory was not meant to be played with two open B gaps. That that's not, you know, the theory was meant to be two closed B gaps, a nose that lags and a backer that fits one of the A's. And then we're going to play everything else. Yeah. So, you know, taking those four interior gaps away with the least amount of players possible was the theory and when you go to Oki, you know, when you think about it, and I know, you know, we talked about this in the pre-show, a lot of people are going to want to see diagrams. And if you're one of those people, I apologize. But if you think about it, if you've got three down, two backers, and two open B gaps, you end up a gap short yeah. on a lot of those runs. So how you fit it 
from Oki and how you fit it with a four eye in front of you are two different things. And that's where the plug scrape world came from. Yeah. I loved it, coach. That was, I mean, look, I watch all your shorts. I'm not going to lie. Um, but that was one that really engaged me. I was like, Oh, this is kind of good stuff here. Uh, to the point where I had to comment and, and ask you some things. And coach, that's one thing I love about you. You answer every comment, uh, maybe, maybe from every coach across the you board. Try, so you, good props to you for doing you, that. When you, when you say that that's what you're going to do on videos, you, you damn sure have to do it. Um, <laughs> there's some that I don't want to respond to, but you know, you have to, but you know, in all honesty, Kyle, I have not played that version yet. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I watched it. Coach took me through it. Makes a hundred percent sense to me. Have not seen it. Um, you know, from Oki two B gaps open to even where it's, you know, they're doing stuff where one, one backers plug and one backer scrape. I have yeah. not seen it. Um, I think that's interesting. You know, you, you did it and I, I drew it up a bunch of different ways and I was like, this isn't terrible. Well, you know, and, the, the, from the, <laughs> I can tell you this much from the Oki standpoint of it, St. Aug fits a lot of their shit that way. Um, they actually had the, I think they had the luxury of visiting, uh, Iowa state. So, yeah. um, two years ago, I remember talking to Brian about it. He was, you know, Brian was coach Braddock was, um, they were messing around with some three high stuff and, and, uh, they were fitting it different than we were. And they were on the cutting edge of how it was being fit. And I was on the YouTube edge from 2018. <laughs> um, and I was fitting it off a of tight front stuff. So, um, you know, I, I, I've seen them do it. We play them in the spring. I've watched their film. Um, you know, it's certainly possible. Uh, I watched New Mexico do it and it's just, I think it's something that's going to keep us in that world a little bit longer, to be honest with you. Yeah. And you make a good point, uh, you know, just about those adjustments. So you, you kind of briefly touched on it. So what are you doing to the tight end set? Are you, if you want to stay in tight front, where are you lining up outside of just the four I zero four I against, you know, 11 um, personnel? You know, the, the, the cheapest one for us. Um, I think the thing a lot of people have to keep in mind for us, the way we play, our three high split field stuff. The Mike linebacker is never part of any of my base coverages. So um, the Mike is the spy add on fourth rusher. Um, the middle safety takes the job of the Mike in traditional quarters defense. So the Mike is not part of any of our deals. Yeah. So um, the cheapest, easiest way we got to handling it from tight front was we would make a, tight call to the Mike linebacker and wherever the tight end was, he would play in a seven technique and we would play tight with a seven and it had no impact on our coverages. Um, and then we just tried to kind of piece together from that. All right, well, can we still fit it the same? The wills technically the only backer in the box, the middle safety's a hybrid. He's a third level player. Um, first year, that was the cheapest and easiest way. We still play over. We carry over, um, Played it actually three high this past year and, and was hit or miss. Um, Oklahoma State was doing a bunch of it. Yeah. Um, you know, so four down, three high was hit or miss. There's a lot of gap exchanges that have to go on for you to really do it right. Um, but, um, you know, we still play over. Uh, we still have our pressure packages that, I you know, to me, um, when people ask you how you handle a tight end, all right, well, base tight. You know, we played that that first year that I got there and we were very successful. We played base tight to 21 and we didn't change anything. Yeah. And, you know, um, our middle safety is going to Navy. That helps. Um, you know, we had some good players that helped. But when it became an issue, the first adjustment was playing the mic in a seven technique, two three man services. That was, you know, kind of the opposite. The inverse of mint, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah. So instead of the fourth rusher coming from weak. The fourth rusher was a seven technique on a tight end side. No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, again, you know, we all go out and we all talk to colleges and this and that. But like you said, if you're not taking it and adapting it to who you are, you're not doing a good job. None of us can go and grab a playbook from the next level and just run it with our kids. No, That's back to life. We don't have those bodies. <laughs> we don't have those coaches. We don't have all those things. So it's like, you know, it's it's kind of a grab bag situation where it's like, all right, this is an issue. How are we going to handle this issue? All right, let's try this. You know, and, yeah. and I think I think there's a lot of great theories in football that actually develop that way. You know, I think midline was probably developed that way. I think midline <laughs> was a veer blocking scheme that got blocked wrong. And, 
the quarterback <laughs> had the wherewithal to pull it. And then when they went back and watched it on VHS or might have been they're back probably, then, it was probably they were probably a millimeter at that point. Oh well, right? yeah, it was it was probably you know, it was it was probably old fashioned, um, where they really had to cut up where cut ups came from. Um so, you know, I think a lot of those things were probably innovations that came from either experiments or mistakes. And then <laughs> somebody looked at it and said, Oh shit, that's really good. How can yeah. we do that now? You know, so um, you know, we we you've been there before you guys, everybody that's coach, you've all been there. You know, it. you're going into Friday. You don't have an answer. Oh shit. Let's try this. And there's some nights where it's not an answer. And then there's some nights where it's like, well, why didn't I think about that earlier? That's pretty damn good. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Matt did a really good uh, thing with me one time early on when I was helping call the defense. Um, when he was a head coach, we were trying to figure out that's when a lot of people started to run 20 personnel power. Yeah, And we were struggling because our, our DM was just always getting kicked. Like no matter how we were teaching wrong arm, we're teaching spilling, all these get kicked. And so he went through this crazy progression with me. Matt, do you remember it? Like you started in the single wing and then you started removing guys. And we talked through the whole thing from single wing all the way to 20 personnel. So, yeah, yeah, that was one of the things we did. And then we would take um, the offensive players and actually align them uh, post snap. Like once the scheme has been run, pulling guards now on the yep. play side and the H is kicked and move the D lineman into place. All right, what are our open gaps we now have to fit? Where's our weaknesses in our defense? I think that's a great tool for coaches to use when they're implementing something new or trying to fit their defense to an offensive scheme. Where are those offensive players going to end up um, against your defensive front? And then what's got to fit behind it? Yeah, so like the, you know, the, the, even front spill world, right? You know, the first thing you got to figure out is, all right, you know, we've gone through all these drills. We, we've taught it. The first thing that you probably need to look at is stand on the other side of the defensive end and figure out that he doesn't even look at the tackle. He looks at the quarterback or, you know, yeah. that, that shotgun offense is the one thing that they've screwed up for high school coaches is that's where D linemen now want to look, you know, yeah. and, and maybe, maybe the college kids do. I don't know. I don't coach that level, but like, you know, it's like, all right, if the ball's going to get snapped from this dude to that dude, I'm going to look at that dude because he's getting the snap. Well, no, when you're talking run fits and you're talking pieces of a puzzle, that's not how this works. So, you know, the first thing is stand behind the offense and see if the defensive end is even looking at the tackle. But the second thing, I think Matt's, you know, um, transgression there of how he thought about that once the down block happens and the kick happens, I think the defensive end needs to realize, okay, so when the tackle goes here and this kick happens, that fullback sniffer, whoever it is, he's so much tighter than I think. So off of this down block, where do I really need to be to spill? You know, so when you yeah. take those pieces like that and you break them down to say, okay, well, look, let's put the offensive guys where they're going to be. Yeah. Because, you know, too many times we look at formations and we talk about plays and, we think the kids know what we're talking about. We're like, all right, look, we get this gap scheme and it's going to be power and it's going to be down kick and everything else. That defensive end has no clue <laughs> what you're talking about, right? So when you go back and say, all right, look, he's the, the, here's the tackle and here's the tackle's down block. Here's where the sniffer's lined up. But guess what? When the sniffer comes to kick, he's being taught that he needs his helmet yep. in a certain spot. So let's figure out how tight this is actually going to be. So when you go to spill, what is the angle – you actually need to be taking versus this veer release down block and this sniffer right at you, you know, what is that angle actually going to look like? Because I could sit here and tell you, hey, down block spill. I could tell you that a million times. What does it actually look like? So when you back it up that way, to me, that's, you know, that, that, that's an awesome way of doing it and then slowing it down to say, all right, look, none of these pieces are moving. This is where they're going to end up. So just understand they're not going to start there, but this is where they're going to end up. So when it start moving, you know, don't freak out. This is where they're going to end up. Yeah. And just like both of you just talked about, uh, you know, that helped my career was Matt making me go through that progression and be like, okay, well, we're going to do this instead. And we're going to do that. We're going to move this guy here. And then I was able to then take that progression and go to my players with it and teach them that progression as well. So just like you said, it's, you know, when, when I started focusing on teaching the game and why things happen, we got a whole lot better. And, 
you know, if you're a young coach out there listening to Coach Mack, listening to us, like that's probably a great example of like teach the why, not just the how all the time and the what, you know, make sure well, you're, you're letting them know. 100%, you know, <laughs> that is correct. And here's the other thing. If you're a young coach out there, whatever you think your players know, minus that by 80%, they don't know <laughs> shit. They don't, you know, and, and we all think that we've got good kids and smart kids and we all think that, that we're going to coach them up. And what we all forget is from day one, they really don't, they don't know much about anything. So anything that you take for granted thinking, oh, yeah, down block spill. All right, great. Yeah, it's a 16-year-old high school kid. Yeah, down block spill, power. You know, GY counter. Yeah, like all those things that you think that you're talking about and saying that you think are so simple, you've got to back yourself up a little bit. You know, those even at the best places around, Maybe down oh, yeah. the road they do, but, you know, early on when you're teaching and coaching, they don't know what the hell you're talking about. So you better slow it down and back it up. Yeah. in their kids, they have a whole lot of other things going on in the day, right? Their girlfriend may have broke up with them, you know, yeah. mom and, and dad may be way, fighting, you know, you just never know what's going on at home. It's not the way it happens in Madden or <laughs> EA sports. So that's not what I'm going to do. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, Matt, do you have I, any, Oh, sorry. Yeah. I got a question for him. Hey coach. Um, I know, Usually when you install something new, you come, you start installing a new scheme. There's always these unforeseen challenges that arise. Like, Hey, I, because we changed this, this other thing ended up happening. Were there any unforeseen challenges going to this three high that uh, young coaches could look out for? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, there were some three by one issues um, because we don't include the Mike linebacker in our uh Coverages, three by one stuff with the back set strong that create four strong. All of a sudden, the mic had to be involved in the coverages because that's the only other way you can equate a number. Yeah. Um, and then we had to we had to exchange. So the mic and the will had to kind of exchange responsibilities. So the mic became part of the push and the strong side coverage, and the will became the add on uh, spy player, so to speak. Um, because we didn't need the will backside because if they're four strong, they only have one week. So if we're five for four, we need to be two for one. Um, you know, that was a little bit of an issue at first because when we when we start day one, the way we do it, the mic is not involved in our coverage progression. So um, seven on seven stuff, when we do seven on seven, we don't even play a mic. We, the middle safety is that guy. Yeah. Um, now, when we work our defensive stuff in practice, we'll – we'll have eight guys in seven on seven. And luckily for me, you know, my head coach is the offensive coordinator and he knows why we're doing it. So he doesn't bitch about us having an extra guy. Um, he knows that we need to teach the mic how to read off the QB and spy and add on. And we'll do drills where the QB leaves a pocket and we make sure he adds on. And, um, yeah. you know, so um, that was the, the three by one stuff was a little bit of, uh, of an issue. Um Pistol stuff when you're when you've got a guy that is when your middle safety by rule generically um, day one ish three high fits off of number three and it's two by two pistol that becomes a little bit of an issue because three has not declared himself um, you know so you know there there were a couple of those unforeseen the biggest one to me um, I would think when we started seeing gt bash type stuff um and we were getting guard tackle pull with the ability to run outside runs away from that yeah um you're i coach the middle safeties and i have somebody else that coaches the 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 inside backers and we really had to get on the same page with how we wanted to do things there because you know if the Mike and the Will are going to run like hell with guard tackle pull. We're a guy short on the bash play, right? So the middle safety can't run with the same thing. So, you know, there's certain sets where it works out for you to where, you know, if it's two by two jet motion bash, well, if three's the lead blocker, then you know the middle safety is going to be in the alley. So the Mike and the Will can run with the GT. There's a couple other sets and Pontevedra did it to us and, some other teams did it to us where it was one of those deals where like, all right, well, the Mike and the Will are gone. The middle safety off of his key is running like hell. We've got too many bodies over the top of everything yeah. and nothing behind it. 
Um, so, you know, the, the easiest way to kind of think about it, and it took me a couple months to figure it out, if the middle safety plays like a hybrid backer, then really with the mic and the will, you're almost treating it 4-3-ish in nature to where however we're fitting this, the middle safety, the mic, and the will need to be on the same page. If they're all running, we're in trouble. If two of them are running, then somebody needs to be behind it, you know. So in our base stuff, it to the, you know, to the middle safety side, the mic and the middle safety are expected to be fast as hell and over the top, and the will's expected to be behind that. Yeah. If it goes away from the middle safety and you allow your mic to run, well, you got to slow your middle safety down so that all three of them aren't over the top. So, um, you know, just some little funky things in there. But I think if you, even if you went back to like three, three stack type stuff, if there's three backers somehow involved in the fit and two of them are playing fast as hell, the third one probably can't play fast as hell. Somebody's got to play behind, right? Like, you know, however you want to, you know, however you want to look at it. I think there's so many different schemes you can look at and say, all right, well, a lot of the times I think we, we talk in terms of two inside backers and, and, all right, what are you going to do? Are you jumping over the top? Are you plugging and, and, and jumping over? How are you doing, you know, or how are you fitting those things? Well, if there's three of them, you know, now you've got to, you got to keep in mind, like the old three, three stack days, that other guy can't be running the same reads and fits as the other two, because if, if you plug one, jump over the other one, well, hell, if the other guy jumps over two, yeah, there's, there's no nothing, cutback. Yeah. You know, so, um, Tie in the middle safety with the mic and the will and based on formations became a little bit of an issue, but um, that just comes down to game plan. Like any other run fit, it's like, all right, look, we're sending the ball here. These guys are playing this way. Middle safety's extra. Where does he need to be? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense, coach. I mean, you just went through the whole progression. Like we had a problem here. We diagnosed the problem and then we decided what the, you know, what the solution would be. And that's such a, just, Again, a great example of breaking things down. Like, look, you didn't know the answer right away. You sat down, you worked through it, all that stuff. And I think a lot of coaches think that your first idea has to be the solution. And it's like, no, it can be your fifth or sixth, you know, work through the process, be collaborative, all that stuff. Because that's that's where I've, A, been, you know, had the most fun, but B, been the best coach. When I get with, you know, an O-line coach or someone else, I'm like, hey, talk me through this. You know, like, well, we're the, struggling. The interesting about that is it, it, that... <clears throat> That's a great philosophy if the first or second time you don't just scrap it and go, shit, this don't work. Yeah. You know, if you're if if you try something new and the first day you get gashed, if you throw it to the side, well, there are no innovations. There are no fixes. You know, it's you know, there's I think too many guys in our business, unfortunately, are so schematic based that when something doesn't work, we've got to we need a new scheme. Well, no, maybe we just need wrinkles to the scheme. Maybe we just need to do things a little bit differently that maybe other people don't do. Like, you know, the years, you know, when all the good defenses around, you know, when, again, when you look at St. Aug, you look at bowls, you look at schools like that, that play really good defense in our area. I I can't always do the things they're doing. Yeah. And, you know, it's working for them and it's probably the right way to do it, but I can't do that with my kids. It doesn't work. Um, so, I think you're you're kind of destined to two different mindsets that you can have. It's like, look, we do it this way or nothing at all. And we do it that way and we get gashed. Or, you know, and, and this was throughout your career, you're going to have these, you know, kind of moments where, you know, these aha moments where you have to say, all right, look, you know, even if it's Nick Saban, Nick Saban does it like this. I really love how he does it. But with my kids, I need to do it his way, but I need to do it. <laughs> like this yeah you know I, do, I can't do it his way verbatim i love his way and i'm gonna do it that way with a slight wrinkle to it and you've got to be able to stand on your own two feet to say all right look when somebody asks you yeah this is what we do and when they ask you why this is the reason why and you know hopefully you have success doing it if it doesn't work nobody gives a shit anyways right but <laughs> if, it, if if you're doing something and taking pieces from other places and you don't have the cats that they have or you don't have the dudes that they have you may be able to still do that but you put your own caveat to it and you put your own niche or your own wrinkle to it and then you have to be able to stand on your own two feet when you have a conversation 
even if it's with those people, you have to say, look, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just telling you that I can't do that. Yeah. So I'm going to do this. And they probably think you're crazy because they can do that. Yeah. You know, So it's like, I, I get it. You guys can fit it that way. You guys can play it that way. You can read it that way. You can line up that way. We're going to do this. And it's, you know, it's not completely off the wall, but it's different than you're used to. And some people are going to say you're crazy. Like I remember having a conversation with Joey Walls 10 years ago, 15 years ago, four, two, five stuff. Right. <laughs> and I said, the first time we played it, we were probably more like they were. We were probably field based and we had a nickel and we had a free safety and a boundary safety, however you want to call it. And I'll be damned if, if a bunch of teams didn't shift trade and motion us and get us into situations where the boundary safety couldn't play the coverages that the field safety could. Yeah. And we were stuck checking three deep or some shit like that. And now again, it's like, all right, formation into the boundary, you check three deep. Okay, well, give the pen and the paper to the offensive coordinator, yep. have a field day, get us to line up in field, shift to, to FIB, and we're three deep. <laughs> and <clears throat> several conversations, several, you know, visits and phone calls. And I said, all right, well, how about this? What if I played with two safeties and they were both hybrid players that none of them were field safeties and none of them were boundary safeties? So that if they shift trade or motion, I can possibly get that guy to be somebody that can play those coverages. Yeah. And obviously in the traditional world of football, you're crazy. Those bodies fit those positions because of who they are. Okay, well, if my kids are 5'10", 160, and 5'10", 165, one of them may be more physical than the other, but like, they're, I'm not recruiting them. I'm not going out and finding a field guy and a boundary guy. They're almost the same dude. Yeah. So like, would I be better off teaching them read side and away side coverages to handle shift trades and motions? Even though I'm teaching a little bit more, we never really have to worry about the shift trade and motion. You just play the picture that's in front of you. Yep. And we took it a step further. And we started treat, treating our Sam and our Will the same way. So we taught the Will how to play read side coverages to say, all right, look, if this team trades us into three by one into the boundary, I need you to be able to play this version of the coverage. Um, you know, because it happened. And when it happened, it was, oh, shit, they just scored 50. We have no answer. And, you know, when you talk to people about it, they say, well, no, you need a nickel. You need a field safety. You need a boundary safety. You need this guy. You need that guy. And my thought was, I can't do that. I just witnessed us get gashed. Yeah. I have to do something else. And, you know, yes, it's crazy to you. Yes, it's off the wall to you. But off the wall and crazy to me is lining up and checking three deep and getting annihilated over and over <laughs> again. Oh, yeah. And, you know, long story short, three or four years later, Army almost beats Oklahoma, and Jay Bateman is the craze because he's playing hybrid players. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, so <laughs> now all of a sudden, these guys are hybrid players in college, and because somebody in college is playing hybrid players, it's okay. Yeah. You know, so that's just, you know, that's, well, that's the way the game is. It's the money ball theory, right? The first couple oh, guys yeah. that do it get absolutely chastised for it, and then yeah. when everyone else adopts it, they forget that the first two people did it. <laughs> and it's 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 money ball and it's results, right? It's the same thing. I, I look at like three high the same way. I guarantee you, if you wanted to go back further, somebody did it. Oh yeah. You know, somebody did it and, and it's like anything else, like you know, zone pressures. Okay, well go back forty years. That was the way three four defenses played every down. They voided a zone. Correct. Yep. They played with defensive ends that they sent and they played five two, not three four. Somebody in our world has done it. <clears throat> Until it catches fire, that person gets credit. But I guarantee you, if you go back far enough, three high is probably further back than Iowa State. It's just that Iowa State got credit because they said, this is how we play defense every down, and so be it. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you, Coach. It's a, it's a Time is a flat circle, right, with all that stuff. It's just we, we just kind of find old stuff and we repeat it and maybe just make a few adjustments. It's like, look at this new thing I'm doing. It's the old 46 of Buddy Ryan. But, yeah, but we like, do it to spread, Coach. Well, and, <laughs> you know, you look at, like, the, you know, the, the word creeper. You yeah. Know, like if, you, if 
you go back 50 years ago, a 3-4 team that sent the Sam off the edge and played three deep, they just didn't call it a creeper. Correct. You know, like it was the rush, the rush end goes 95% of the time. He almost never drops. The Sam drops 95% of the time. What if we send the Sam and the rush becomes a curl flat player? Yep. You know, like, and then <clears throat> that takes off and all these replacement blitzes and creepers and deals are like, we need to send four, but drop seven. If you really trace that back to its roots, it was three, four stuff from 40, 50 years ago. Oh, yeah. They just, nobody called it creeper. <laughs> so whoever turned, whoever came up with the <clears throat> word creeper, God bless you. You made a million, you know, good for you, but <laughs> you didn't really reinvent the wheel. You just found a, you know, a fancy way to do something that guys are doing 40 years ago. Absolutely. All right, coach. So let's get real quick into coverages. Um, yeah. You know, this is something I'm always curious about too, because I'm a traditionally a, a match coverage guy. I know you have been in the past, but with the three high, I've seen a lot more people running, you know, the Tampa twos and things like that. So I'm curious to see what you've done with it. No, we're, we're day one. We're match still matching. Perfect. Yeah, we're day one. We're quarters base quarters toolbox. My, my installation, my teaching, my pedagogy all goes back to Gary Patterson, TCU stuff. Um, I just don't use his terminology. Um, it's a mix of mine, what I grew up in, um, you know, but we're, we're check with me defense. We're, we're coverage by formation, you know, two removed, three removed, two tight, three tight. You know, we have all our checks based on formations and how we play it. Um, and we start quarters coverage pattern match day one, everything we do. Uh, now, do we play Tampa too? Yes. Um, you know, do we do some of the things those guys do? Yes. Um, but I was just able to figure out a way to say, all right, look, you know, in theory, if the middle safety replaces the mic, what is the difference in all those coverages? It's the same. I'm yeah. dropping seven. I've got seven in, in, you know, in coverage. I can handle push motions when I'm playing palms and two read and I can play three vertical. Um, so our system is the same as it was as a split field team for the last 20 years. You just take the middle safety and, and every job that you would know in your world is the mic is yeah. now the middle safety. Yeah. I, that makes a lot of sense, right? Cause you also get a more athletic guy for all the push stuff that you're talking about that in times has given our mic trouble, right? Yep. They push a guy and now our mic's trying to run vertical with two. Cause we pushed our Sam or our nickel and we're like, you know, I know I have a safety there, but right. You know, sometimes it still can get dangerous with that guy just being a little quicker. I, I and, think the biggest thing for us, Kyle, to be honest <laughs> with you, that helped a bunch was like, you know, when I was calling offensive stuff, we had a bunch of things that were read away from Mike, you know, Ram option, however you want to call it. Right. And you push, they push. And now we know the quarterback knows what he's trying to do with the ball. Um, and when it was new and people didn't really realize what was going on, when you push motion, the mic never moves. Yeah. You know, the middle safety is the guy that's adjusting and the mic. So I think for a lot of those guys that were running things off the mic pushing, our mic never pushed. So I think it freaked some quarterbacks and some offensive coordinators out because that guy never moved. Yeah, it's a really good point there, Coach. And, it, and it's like eventually offensive guys, are they're really good. They're sick people. Um, <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they're inherently, um, you know, uh, divisive by nature. So they fig in time they started figuring out, all right, wait a minute. It's palms, but the middle safety is the mic, so we got to teach the quarterback something different. And yeah. that's actually the – when I got to Bishop Kenny, the reason we played it is because Coach Krause said, you know, to me, he said, look, when I think about three high stuff, I have to almost redo my entire quarterback manual. Yeah. He's like, I have, to, I have to almost recreate everything I've taught my kids because of that. Um, you know, so it was just one more – it was just, you know, one more deception piece in there to say, look, we're, we're pushing things the same. You, you just got to realize that the guy at eight's doing it, not the guy at four. And then once teams figured that out, like offensive guys are good, right? Once they figured that out, it's like, all right, now that's <clears throat> so. But the beauty of it, with the position of where that middle safety is, the Tampa twos and the three high rotations all become so much better because now the guy that you thought was pushing is now inserting, you know, so all those things that, you know, all the, 
the things that you have to carry to protect it. If you're middle of the field open, you got to close the middle or you're dead. Um, <laughs> so, you know, all the things that you carry to protect that are now a little bit more um, exotic at that point. Yeah. Kind of exotic, you know, exotic or, or at least a little bit different. That guy's a post player. He's right there in the middle, but then he rotates down and one of the other safeties is a post player. So, you know, your, your, your three deep insertion stuff gets a little more exotic. Yeah, coach, talking about the guys having to make adjustments and stuff, I'm actually good friends with one of the guys who spent an entire offseason figuring out some of your going, I don't know what we're going to do against three high, and maybe we'll, you know, we, we got to figure out a way to block that middle guy. Maybe we'll send the slot to him instead of the tackle. And I mean, coach, I remember having those conversations every day, and I was like, don't ask me. I don't run three high. I have no idea what they're doing. Um, if, it's, if, it's, if it's one of the guys that I'm thinking about. It's the guy you're thinking of. I did a really good job the first year and he didn't figure it out. And this past year he figured it out to the tune of about 110. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty good. I, I've dealt with him quite a bit myself every day in practice. And so you can, uh, some well, days you get him, some days you don't. Here's a, here's an even better story to that. He figured it out, but the guy that also figured it out, Matt Lawrence figured it out because I had Matt do a virtual clinic for me. <laughs> And and I had him on PlayFast doing virtual clinics last year. We we yeah. did like ten virtual clinics, and and um, Matt did one for me. And we started talking about it. And I actually told Matt what drives me nuts. And this year, in the playoff game, more so the first <laughs> game, the first game we kind of held our own. They stayed, yeah. um, you know, they stayed eleven personnel RPO ish, um, and we were good. And then the playoff game, it was all double sniffer 12. And I saw Matt at a weightlifting meet. I said, did you guys figure out that we kind of fit everything off the sniffer? And he said, no, coach, to be honest with you, you told me in that clinic that we did that you hate 12. And I said, all right, good for you. You know, yeah, good for you, it's... bad for me, good for the play fast world. I, I gave out information that ended up costing me 50 points because we, you know, we, we, we just, and I don't know, yeah. you know, we we played the middle safety down um, away from the nickel to get into three four, um, you know. So we had some answers, but Jim's and Joe's, I don't think we really had answers. Um, so now, coach, you, you're playing with a bunch of guys that were literally me. So yeah, um, that there's a reason why I'm sitting here doing a podcast right now. Yeah, they were. <laughs> we were. We were not. Um, we were not real sexy up front. Um, so you know that that haven't been in 50 years coach (laughs) yeah yeah probably not probably not just talking about you talking about the uh mike now not having that push responsibility just in my head i start of course i go straight to stick route and stick we're trying to get that mike to stretch out of the box and man that's that's automatically even in the quick game a nightmare to to try to okay yeah, now it, we got to worry know, about the safety. Be honest with you, coach. It's a nightmare <laughs> until you figure out that it's the middle safety, and then once you figure that out, it's all the same shit. Like it's all you're gonna get the same. You're gonna get the same leverage. You're gonna get the same width. You're gonna get the same reads. Just don't look at the mic because he's really not going anywhere. He's he's not in the coverage. So, um, you know, need it first. Once guys kind of figured it out, it's like all right. Well, now we just got to. But it's still. The good thing about it is you still have to go all year teaching your quarterback on these certain plays. We run stick. We want to read this guy. Yeah. Well, yep. All of a sudden, this week, it's not that guy. You no, know? it's not so the it's mic. Still, yeah. It's still funky. It still serves its purpose. You know, but the real ones and the good ones that figure it out, they're like, all right, we just take that read one level behind him. It's actually him. <clears throat> and he's doing – you know, there's no secrets out there. He's doing all the same stuff that Mike would do. It, it's no, I mean, you could verbatim right now, you could draw up three high the way you used to play split field to read. Yeah. Eliminate the mic, put the middle safety <clears> in, <throat> and handle every route combination. Because if you knew what the mic did in your defense, you know what the middle safety is going to do in ours. Like, it's, now, it's literally it's literally that simple. Now, three by one is a different <clears> animal, but. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're listening to this, I can promise you this, Coach Coach Max probably coming up with some change up off that, because I I've been on the you know the other end of you, Coach Mac, and I've never seen someone when you called offense too, I've never seen someone come up with more creative palms beaters than you, and I I remember we played you guys in the game, it was the first game of the year, 
And it, I mean, at one point you have like, it looks like bubble. You have like the slot backpedal and then he just takes off vertical <laughs> and we're trying Ow. to make the interchange. And I'm like, freaking it, Mac. The good thing about that was, you know, <clears throat> on paper, theoretically beautiful, but the kid doing that was the four by four state champ, 400 meter state champ runs track at FSU. So one of the only guys on our team that could, run, that could actually run by yeah. the guy at Oak Leaf. So, um, you know, but yeah, it's like, it's like when, you, and this is the other thing I could, t- I would tell young coaches, if you ever had a chance on a football staff going into, let's say spring football, if you ever had a chance to take your offensive guys and make them coach defense and your defensive guys and make them coach offense just for a spring, it, you know, will it set your installs and things back? Maybe, but you will do your staff just a world of good when you figure out the issues that the other guy is going through. Yeah. It makes you a million times. So, you know, when I'm sitting there looking at palms to beat hmm. it and I'm sitting there looking at palms coaching it and it's like, all right, well, these are all the things that are driving me freaking nuts. Why don't I just run them? Yeah. You know, it's like, and, and that's what offensive guys do, right? They figure the beaters out. And as defensive coaches, we got to, we got to have answers. We got to have changeups. We got to rep the shit out of the beaters because they're going to call the beater to the coverage, right? Like, yep. I think the one mistake guys make all the time is like, all right, I'm just going to have a different coverage so they can't run the palms beater. At some point in that game, he's getting palms and he's got a beater and you got to play it, right? The whole, whether it's the whole yeah. shot, post over dig, mills, whatever you want to draw up, right? At some Snag point. Snag and go, game, coach. Yeah, everything, yeah. I mean, <laughs> now also, also a little bit easier to play with the middle safety instead of the mic matching the snag and go, the middle it's safety true. is. But still the same bitch, right? Middle of the field's open. Push. That's my new three. He runs snag, <laughs> and then he goes by me like, you know. Um, and if you're listening, I'm giving out route combos that Coach Mack threw against me for, for very good success. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Limited success. The better one, <laughs> the, the funky one, is, is when Lincoln Riley runs smash and the hitch becomes the middle of the field go player. That is yeah. nasty as shit. Oh yeah, so it's, it's snag and go from smash. That <laughs> is nasty. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any piece of that. Yeah. So, that's coach, great. um, really appreciate you on tonight. So we always, we always end with a few questions, uh, just kind of some random questions. Uh, the first one I'm going to ask you is, when is the Play Fast Clinic coming back? Because, coach, I get that question from a lot of people, and I'm like, you guys know I'm not Coach Mac, right? But they ask me, so I'm asking you: Are we going to get this clinic back up and rolling? Yeah, so here's the kind of deal we got. <laughs> um, Embassy Suites was phenomenal. Having it on the ocean in January was phenomenal. Yes, it was. That is a big wedding venue that has to be booked really, really far. Now we did we did a good um, we did a really good job. We every room they asked us to book, we booked. Um, you know, so we held up to our end of the bargain. But it's still a huge wedding venue, and it's really hard to get that place. And um, shout out to Joel Brighton, who did a lot of the legwork to get that place. Um, I cannot foresee us not doing the clinic there. Um, Yeah. You know, there's a lot of other venues in Jacksonville that are awesome. I get the same question you get all the time and I want to do it again. Trust me. I want to do it again for a lot of reasons. Um, I but think it is a lot of work and I do acknowledge that. <laughs> it, it, you know, it is, but I personally want to do it again. Cause I think the clinic world sucks. I, I'll throw it out there. I'm not afraid to say it. Yes, think, it does. Know, coach. You got the, you got some of these new guys coming along, <laughs> right? Playbook or whatever that one is. And they asked me to, they asked me to speak at one of theirs. And I just told <laughs> them, you know, to be honest with you, it's kind of a conflict of interests. And at the same time, you guys are new. Find a young guy that hasn't spoke. Find somebody else. I've spoken at Glacier Clinics. I, I appreciate, um, you know, the opportunity. And, and I have the utmost respect for you guys asking me. But it was kind of a conflict of interest, right? Like, that's the guy I was two years ago. I, I wanted yeah. to be that option. Um, and... So I still get the question all the time. I, I just don't see a world where it's not at the embassy suites. I, I don't. Um, Coach, that was people, a great venue. <laughs> a lot of great venues in Jacksonville. Don't get me wrong. A lot of guys that 
if we didn't do it on the ocean at the embassy suites, I think we'd still get a ton of interest. And I, I just, in my mind, you know, it was, it was almost like, you know, um, everything aligned. We got it off the ground. The venue was, they needed help. It was, you know, now it was before the pandemic. So it wasn't yeah. like they were struggling, but they were brand new. Um, you know, that hotel had only been open a year. Um, the, the venue, the location, them having happy hour for an hour and a half or whatever they do, which led into all the other ideas that, that we had that I had never seen before. Right. So, um, AFCA Super Bowl parties, everything else at some point that you're paying for that. Right. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's, it is what it is. And, you know, um, Glacier clinics. All right. You know, back in the day, the Nike clinic used to do like a couple kegs of beer at a pool and the Florida state staff would speak. Right. Um, those things have all kind of gone away. You're on your own, go get, go get food and drink. And so, you know, to me, it was like, okay, a social that is sponsored by somebody that it's two hours, all you can drink for coaches. The hotel had two hour happy hours every day. Yeah, We did a lunch the next day. Like I would love to tie a golf outing into it. I would love to find a way to tie in either like Texas Hold'em tournaments or cornhole tournaments or like, let's find the things that everybody loves doing. Let's find everybody's vice. Yeah, Let's put it all into one clinic to say when guys go away. Now the guys that come with their families because of the embassy suites, awesome, more power to you. But if guys are going away on staff retreats, what are all the things they're trying to do? And let's put it together with a clinic that is all ball, no bullshit, high school, same way you guys are doing this podcast right now. High school guys that understand what we deal with. <clears throat> um, and on top of that, let's make it an even better experience, right? You, you want to go, we all go to clinics and we search all the nearby bars and we search the nearby golf courses or whatever, whatever you're into, right? So. What if we try and encapsulate all those things under one roof to say, look, this is ball and it's social and it's two hours open bar and it's lunch. <laughs> like, you know, when you go to Glacier, they never give you a meal. Yeah. You don't get a meal or anything, you know, it's Correct. like, um, so, uh, long story short answer to that question. It needs to happen again. Um, by all means, if you want to be the spokesperson to get it going again, then go ahead and let it rip. But I just think it needs <laughs> to happen. Yeah. Um, and how cool Coach, would you be? Coach, Play fast I, clinics with live board drill podcasts. Coach, we will take that torch and we'll run with it. Um, yeah, you know, I, like I, it. I loved it, you know, and, and same thing. Uh, we'll offer to do the graphics again as well. Uh, anything yeah. we can do to help out. But, Coach, we're for it. I believe I do know a guy in the golf industry that can maybe uh, work out some deals with some courses. So I think I think we push for it. I think that was what, a great idea. So we will help you do, be the mouthpiece. Whatever you do, don't do Royal St. Augustine, even though it's not in our portfolio, coach. Good, because <laughs> it's a fucking dog track. <laughs> not a, not a good. Fan. I'm glad it wasn't in our portfolio because yeah. that would have been a problem for me. Um, <laughs> well, I'm smart enough to know if it was in your portfolio, I wouldn't have said that. No, no. Um, coach, all right. So we always end with one last question. Um, this is just a general thing about the school, about the program, everything. What is the coolest or most unique thing that you guys do at Bishop Kenny that maybe no one else does or very few people do? Um, the family atmosphere at Kenny is really off the charts. Coach Krause does a, an amazing job, um, and I've learned a ton from him. You know, we're two completely different people. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that the fact that I was a head coach that called both sides of the ball. Um, Nobody thought that it would ever work. Um, you know, a lot of people thought that I couldn't be an assistant coach, number one. A lot of people thought that I would want to input everything, number two. But I think number three is we are, you know, a, about opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, up front on paper in person. Behind closed doors, we're probably more alike than a lot of people know. Um we have a lot of the same interests. I'm actually, we have a 7.40 tea time tomorrow morning. Um, I'm going to roll greens first, and then he's going to meet me at Fleming, and we're going to tee it up. So <clears throat> huge golf fan. Um, you know, uh, better personality and sense of humor than people give him credit for. Oh, um, yeah. He's funny now. He's, yeah, he's, you know, it, it's so. 
but the way he approaches the program from a family standpoint and a relationship standpoint, um, you know, a lot of great guys out there doing culture stuff, a lot of great guys out there doing, um, you know, program based stuff, but he really takes it to another level of this guy's. And he lets you know when you're coaching, like, Hey guys, this is, you know, this is what it's all about. You know, and he loves, he loves ball more than anybody. Um, you know, he loves offense more than anybody, but he will let you know in a heartbeat, Hey guys, look, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And if not, then you probably aren't going to work here. And, um, you know, we do, you know, just different team building exercises and how he incorporates, you know, the, the, the Catholic life, private school life into all the things we're doing and how he holds the kids accountable. Um, you know, do we get a certain clientele that makes it a little bit easier? Yeah, we do. You know, like it's, it's not Orange Park, it's not Oakleaf. Um, you know, but with that comes a whole other host of issues and, you know, how he navigates those and how he keeps the culture, the family, the core, he doesn't sell out. Um, you know, he doesn't sell out to the private school way of doing things, you know, to where we're out shopping, you know, and buying everything we can get our hands on. If Bishop Kenny is for you and that's the life you want to live, then by all means, we'd love to have you. If not, he really doesn't want any part of it. So, um, you know, just that, that aspect, um, the, the organization of everything. I thought I was kind of organized. I mean, I do a lot of things still old fashioned, write them down. He is, I mean, you know, the, the technology nowadays with, with Google sheets and practice plans and all that stuff. Um, yeah. you know, that, that's just that stuff that the organization of it, the structure of it, the year round structure of it, the, fam, you know, family culture part of it. And then you, you know, you can't, it's not anything per se that we do or he does, but Friday night when that's the setting, I don't know how you can beat it. If you don't know what he's talking about, Bishop Kenny is located on the St. John's River in the one end zone opens up to the Jag Stadium in the background. It is a special setting to play a high school football game. It's, I was lucky enough to play there for four years, so I, I got that view it, quite yeah, a bit. It's I've I've <laughs> I've coached on the other side of that for 15, 18 years and now on this side for two years. And, you know, there's bigger crowds for sure. You know, there's some bigger spectacles um, at, at, you know, some programs that are, uh, are a little bit more entrenched in, in, in competing for state titles and, and pageantry, you know, with high school football, it's a lot that the, the places that I love are the places that have a ton of spirit and pageantry that aren't perennial state powers. Yeah. Like that to me is those kids are having a really good time. Um, so, you know, we only have 1500 students, whatever it may be. There's places that have bigger crowds. There's places that have a little bit more pageantry, but you will not get a setting like that on Friday night. I've coached in a lot of places, <laughs> you know, I've coached in the graveyard. I've coached at boot Hill. I've coached in a lot of different places that are awesome. You know, I was a head coach at Baker for two years. Phenomenal, unbelievable setting in the middle of oh, town. Yeah. It is nothing like that it it not even close 100 percent. you know coach and one other thing you have there is a fantastic ad he i'm a huge fan of thorson he's a he's an we, awesome awesome guy we went at it we went at it for a while as um you know rivals head coaches and we had a couple choice words one year at baker county when he wasn't happy with um wasn't happy with something we did but it just so <laughs> happened we were losing by 30 some odd points so i really didn't understand why he wasn't happy. I was the one that should have not been happy, but, uh, water <laughs> under the bridge. now where did you, where did, um, where was Matt, the head coach when you were working with him? He was at Oviedo and at Atlantic high school before then. So, um, Matt, I'll let you oh, talk. I, sorry. I, I, Orlando, I Daytona, the, all that area. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where you live now? Yeah. I'm in, I'm over at Lake Brantley high school right now. Uh, nice. but, I uh I was at Atlantic in I guess 2016, 2015, yeah. 2016, then took over at Oviedo in 17. Nice. The crazy world, you never know like when you become an assistant coach and you work for somebody and you know whether things work or they don't work like you never know 5 years from now what the hell you're going to be doing, you know, like who who would have thought that you're working at Oviedo and then you go to Oakleaf or you go, you know, to to Ponte Vedra for wherever you went first, you come up north and 
five years later, you're doing a podcast with a guy that, you know, you, you were coaching for six years ago. It's, it's just, yeah, it is, it, you know, and the way me and Matt met was fantastic. I was a DFO at Mercer and, um, they had, they had created the DFO position, had it for one year and they were like, yeah, we really don't want to pay for this spot anymore. So we're just cutting the whole job. And, um, so I went down, I was like, I'm going back to Florida to do high school coaching. And I interview, I call up Matt. I go down and do an interview. My Jeep breaks down in a gas station. The battery is completely dead. Matt shows up, helps me change the battery. And then we go on and do the interview. And I was like, yeah, uh, I'm pretty much going to work for this guy unless he says like, he's a serial killer. And, uh, we've been very good friends since. So, uh, it's, it's kind of fun how that works out. Matt's one of my best friends. I still talk to him three, four times a week outside the podcast and we talk all the time on this one. So uh, the relationships in football have definitely been the best part of, of my life. Now I'm sure Matt is a phenomenal human being, but he must've been really short on fucking coaches. Oh yeah. Coach, I was <laughs> oh, yeah. the only one. I was the only one. There's no doubt about that. He's, so. he's, he's, he's a special human being, but if he was there meeting you and doing all that, he really needed a coach. coach he I was, did. I was, I was flipping through pop Warner coach resumes and then his came across, and I said, well, I, I, he worked for Huddle, so at least he can do that. So when I, you, I got a guy who can do technology, yeah. I'll take it. When when you go through it as a head coach and you deal with all that shit, you'll change two tires, charge a battery, you'll do a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> if you can find somebody that can coach, you'll you'll drive miles just to do that. I mean, it, it's it's hard to find guys. It's hard to find good guys. Like, you know, it's – Especially in this state. Uh, it's get, Well, yeah, it's getting worse now. Right? You know, you don't want to yeah. pay anybody, and – Everybody wants to jump and the bigger thing, you know, the the teaching world is, is a hard enough deal, but like the bigger thing to me nowadays is everybody, everybody at 19 years old wants to be Nick Saban. Yep. Yep. You know, there's no, there's no like, Hey, yeah, man, I'd love to coach DBs. I'd love to coach receivers. It's like, no, Hey, check out this play. No, that's not, (laughs) you know, that's not the way this works. Here's the way it works. You know, you line fields, you wash uniforms, you coach a position and then, you know, you show your value. And when you show your value, you then move your way up like that. That's not the way. I don't know how many other businesses we have in, in, in our country where the 19 year old kid goes to the top of the ladder and says, Hey, give me, <laughs> you know, sports yeah. athletes. Yes. <laughs> we pay the draft pick. Yeah. We, I get that. But like, you know, if you go to Apple or IBM straight out of college and say, yeah, look, I need, seven figures all these other things like that's not the way the world works so why should it work like that in football now it's such a good point we talk about that all the time about young coaches and 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 getting developed because you know again i i became a good coach because i failed a lot not because i said go make me this and go do that and coach i'm sure you're the same thing and matt's the same way you learn by failing and then getting embarrassed about it and embarrassed so much that you're like, that shit's never going to happen again. I'm going to figure out a way that that doesn't happen again. And, you know, well, at least and, in my case, you know, I'm sure Matt can attest to this too. When you're, you know, as an assistant coach, you also learn by getting your ass ripped. Yeah. You, you know, yep. you learn, you learn hmm. not only by mistakes, but you learn, you know, to have thick skin, you learn how to deal with all that stuff. Because if you don't learn that the first time it happens, you're a coordinator on a, uh, you know, at a job. And the first time it happens, you take your ball and go home yep. because you don't know how to deal with that on a 10 week, 11 week, 12 week basis. And, you know, it, it just, to me, it just sets up failure for the long haul, right? A lot of those, you know, most of those guys are not going to make it. Some of them are going to make it. Some of them are going to make it and we're going to watch them coach on Saturday. Yeah, Those are few and far between, you know, but, most of them, they're just not going to make it. They're going to bounce from job to job because it was so easy. You you never earned your stripes. You never, you know, got thick skin. You never had to deal with, you know, what everybody else did. And here you are calling plays at 21. And when the shit hits the fan, you can't handle it. And you're just going to go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. There's nothing better than that. Like I, I like to say, I've been ripped by the best of them from from eighty five million dollar man Jimbo Fisher all the way down to uh to Matt. I've been yep. ripped by every dead last one of them. <laughs> and Frank Garris. I have been ripped by Frank Garris. I have a great story that I'll tell off the air about that some other time. Yeah, you you've made it if you've been ripped by him. But it's you know to me it's like rite of passage. You know that that's I I wouldn't you know I I was. I was a GA at a D3 school going and getting lunch, you know, going to a deli 
and getting seven lunch orders. Like, you know, that's it, it. It comes with the territory. And when you finally get your shot, you're grateful to get your shot. And then you also, the other thing is if any of those guys do make it, I don't know if they know how to pay it back. Yeah. You that's know, because, such an important piece because they never mm -hmm. struggle. They never like, you know, if you woke up on third and thought you hit a triple and you've never been through it, like, how do you pay it back to the kid that really needs it or the young guy that really needs it? Like you, you always had it handed to you. And um, the guys that earn it the way it used to be earned and the pecking order of climbing the ladder and doing all these jobs to say, I'm part of the program and I'm going to add value to me down the road. Those are the guys that should be mentoring our coaches in the future because they're going to pay it forward, <clears throat> pay it back. However you want to look at it. Um, you know, they're going to take care of people and they're going to do it the right way. These other guys, they're just going to put a staff together the same way the staff was put together when they were hired. And we're just yeah. going to be in a constant state of ever changing oh, yeah. flux and everything else. That's that's such a good point, Coach, and obviously that's why Play Fast Football is here. That's why the Board Drill Podcast is here. We're out there to help coach and educate them. Uh, if you're interested in reaching out, Coach Mac's fantastic on social media. On Twitter, he's at Coach Mac 8740 and then also at Play Fast FB. Uh, he's also on YouTube, and Coach, you have a Patreon as well? Yeah, the Patreon is, is like the smallest version. That's YouTube guys that want – that on steroids it's not um it's not you're not going to get pdfs you're not going to get college film you're not going to get the only th the thing you get that i don't do on youtube is i will take you through us playing stuff um yeah so uh during the season i i do videos where i go drive you know the first three drives of the game and i take you through what we're playing calls good bad indifferent right um That's if we're cool talking about during coaches, i get on there we're talking about coverages, like if you, you know, just like we segued the three high stuff, if you wanted to see palms or quarters from three high, I'll show you seven on seven clips. I'll show you the clips. So it's kind of YouTube on steroids. Um, and I don't really, the only reason I don't do more or promote it more is because I, I, YouTube is how I got where I am. YouTube is a free platform. Yeah. I don't ever want to sell out to a platform that is, you know, Patreon is subscription base it's five dollars a month right you're not breaking anybody's back by any means but um my i don't have state titles i don't have a million wins you mentioned i have 100 wins yes well i have over 100 losses also so nobody's ever going to know me for that but they know me from play fast and it's because of the youtube platform so i never want to lose that um so if you if you kind of um for me at least the way i started right it's different for everybody it's different yeah. for you know, it's different for Cody and it's different for you guys. And if you, if you, if you started with a free platform that got you your following, it's hard to then put it behind a paywall. Yeah. You know, so, um, so what I do is I try and take it a, a above and beyond YouTube. Um, I try to take it a step forward with film and some other things and I'll use just play diagrams and, you know, things like that to, to, to take it up a notch. All of our, all, all of our play fast clips, you know, so every speaker we had at play fast, there's, 15 minute clips of them and some of their presentations on there. So it goes back to stuff that I've had for four or five years that we've been doing. And, um, you know, so guys that get on there, it's, it's more than just me on a whiteboard. Um, but it's not, um, it's, it, it's not where I'm trying to make my hay in the world. You know, it's, it's subsidiary. It's, I need to do more to be honest with you. I, I don't do the greatest job. I need to do more, but, um, it's never going to be the platform for me because I cut my teeth in a YouTube world of free shit. And, um, <laughs> you know, huh. yeah, this is not a business pitch for anybody because if you follow my lead, you'll probably be shitty in business like I am. Um, but you know, it's just, for me, it's the way to, it's, it's just, uh, I wouldn't have coach Mac or play fast without YouTube. So I can't cut those people off. And just in my mind, I have a hard time separating the two paywall yeah. <laughs> free. As soon as I switch those two, I think I've kind of cut some people off. And I've had several conversations with business people that say you're an idiot, you know, um, but that's just the way my mind sees it. Right. I see it as YouTube free Patreon subscription. Yeah. Don't go all in on Patreon because then I'm cutting off the YouTube people. 
Yeah, no, we're the same way. We've we've always talked about we're our podcasts are always going to be free. Always give me on YouTube and content there for everybody. You know, we, we haven't got to the point where we're doing paid content. Maybe we will, but we're we're YouTube more free. So we agree with you on that. Um, if you're interested in reaching out to me and Matt, you can reach out to us at the board drill podcast at gmail.com at board drill pod on Twitter, TikTok. We're, you know, we're all up with the tech, so we're going to be on all those. So you'll see all these clips. Um, again, if you've been listening, please subscribe, please like all that stuff really helps us comment on it. If you got questions for coach, let us know coach. Thanks again for being here tonight. We appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Hey, I appreciate, uh, being here. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. And uh, for the followers out there, Matt is the face of the podcast, by the way. 100%. I'm just the beard. Don't let the beard fool you. Matt is the face of the podcast. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Coach. All right. Appreciate Appreciate you.